Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It is 7.05. We're going to go ahead and get started, um, and we will move through pretty quickly. Um, we don't have a huge agenda tonight, but we do have two guest speakers joining us, so we want to make sure everybody has an opportunity um, to hear from them, and then open the floor, of course, at the end for folks who might have something they like to share. If this is the first time you're joining us, please remember to keep your microphones muted uh, unless you're presenting or actively asking a question, just so we can make sure that there's no feedback um, when folks are speaking. Um, I will go ahead and turn the floor over to our treasurer, Eric, to give the treasurer's report, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jess. Um, okay, so we'll start on the balance sheet. So um, we have a little over $2,600 in checking, a little over $17,000 in savings, and petty cash remains unchanged at twelve, a little over twelve hundred. dollars um, The other things that I would call out here, too, um, is the checking account. Um, we did have some increases, which we'll go over a minute on the income statement. And then the scholarship fund also increased. We did receive uh payments for the online fundraiser that we did through network for good for facebook and so that um did increase to uh, uh just shy of two thousand dollars so if we move over to the ex uh income statement excuse me excuse my dogs um so we've got uh residential uh, memberships continues to still um have a you know good solid um stream in uh, we've been starting to see business memberships pick up. Um, so there we did have one bronze come in this this month as well. Um, the miscellaneous donation under donations, we had a that's where we had the uh, Facebook um, fundraiser that I mentioned. So we did receive the final payment out of that fundraiser um, that was nine hundred thirty five dollars. It ended up being um, around uh, uh, I think twelve fifty total that we received two payments from them for that. Uh, we did also receive some uh, yard sale um, sign registrations um, earlier in the month, and then um, we started to have um, income from the festival with vendors uh, registering um, for their booths and paying their uh, booth fee. Um, we also had a little bit of interest income, so that brings our total income for the um, uh, month of May to just under $1,500. On the expenses, we had our normal monthly expenses of rent and utilities. Um, and then we also had some miscellaneous supplies and um, some advertising marketing. We um, printed off some uh, <clears throat> like welcome cards to the neighborhood. Um, so that brought our total expenses in at $658. So we actually had net income for the month of $837. Again, apologies for the docs. Hold on a second. All right. So the last thing I did want to mention is because our, um, uh, Jess, if you can go back over to the balance sheet real fast. So as I mentioned earlier, our scholarship fund uh, came in just under um, our fundraising for the year between the chili cook-off. Uh, we had a little bit of leftover funds from last year that did not get used. And then the online fundraiser. So we came in just under um, two thousand dollars. So I would propose that we move uh, thirteen dollars out of the general fund into the scholarship fund, so that we can round out to an even two thousand dollars to give to the scholarship committee to award. Um, you know how they see fit. Um, last year they awarded two scholarships. In previous years they had awarded one, um, but um, giving them an even two thousand dollars, I think, would be would be good. Wanted to see if there's any support for that motion or any um, opposition? All board members were in support of this. So um, anyone here tonight who's a member opposed to doing that? Okay. All right. Sounds I'll like we're take good to that go. is good to go. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jess. Thanks. All right. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to go ahead here. Um, we'll move on to our guest speakers for the evening. Um, Catherine, I, I heard Carmen say that she has a hard stop, I believe, at 7.30. Do you have that as well? Do you want Carmen to go first? Carmen can go first. Okay, great. Carmen, then the floor is yours if you'd just like to introduce yourself um, and let folks know what you're sharing with us tonight. Oh, you're muted, Carmen. Hello, everyone. So forgive me. I'm, not I'm more familiar with WebEx, so trying to navigate through 
uh, uh, Zoom, but thanks so much for inviting me. My name is Carmen Duckins and I serve as your um, City of Columbus 311 service um, manager. So I manage the 311 service center here uh, for the City of Columbus. And we, of course, are your first um, or primary, I should say, connection to city services. If you need you know, uh, to be connected to any city services, 311 is a number that you call or 614-645-3111. And so I was actually asked to talk a little bit about, um, we launched, if you, if the, for those of you who do not know, we launched a new website and also a mobile app, a new application, a 311, we call it 3111 view for the city of Columbus. And so uh, I can't see a show of hands, but how many people are familiar um, with the new platform? <laughs> okay, well, hopefully you like it. Um, everyone, this, this platform is new for everyone, residents, um, our internal departments and 311 as well. The platform, legacy platform that we we left uh, had been in place since 2006. Uh, and so we have growing pains. We needed a more robust um, platform to handle the growing number of um, contacts that we have here in uh, 311. As you know, the city of Columbus is growing and so the platform needed to evolve as well. So the city of Columbus elected to implement a new uh, customer management resource, uh, customer resource management system. And so I am going to try sharing my screen um, and basically walk you walk through a little bit of the public facing site of what everyone hopefully is either familiar with. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free um, to um, jump in. I will try to watch the chat or actually I'm going to pull on Catherine. Catherine, if you can, let's tag team. If you can watch the chat for me, that would be good. So bear with me. I know I saw a share button somewhere. It should be in the bottom center of your screen. Ah, bright green. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me know if everyone can see my screen. Sure can. All right. What you are looking at, and I am currently in a stage environment because I don't want to mess with production, but this is actually, if you download the mobile application, this is um, the platform that you will see for the mobile application. And the icons are, speak to themselves. Um, we've got a home button. Messages would be messages that are generated to you and from you. Um, the service request button here is where you would start if you want to create or submit a service request. This tab here is for account information. And then of course, this tab here is for more where you can get to other features of um, the application. Um, and it's almost pretty much in all of the icons that are listed are here as well. If you hit that more um, button. So I'll just go back to the home screen. We're asking everyone what we couldn't do um, when we were bringing up the new application was uh, migrate over all of the customer contacts. We had a ton of customer contacts in the legacy system. So if you haven't done so, we are encouraging um, our wonderful residents to please create an account in the new OneView system. We were not able to migrate all of those con customer contacts over to the new system. And so we're hoping that everyone, if you have not already done so, to please go ahead and um, register an account here. Hey, Carmen, I'm just a quick sort of related question that we have in sure. chat. So um, we know the accounts really weren't able to migrate, but what about the history of old requests? If folks still have the request numbers that they put in previously, can they still see those in the new system? they will be able to see those in the new system once you have an account. So what happens is you would need to register for an account and then you would contact the 311 service center. What we're able to do is to connect those um, legacy um, contacts or service requests. We would have to basically migrate them over to your new contact. So it's a manual process, but if you create an account, then everything that you create up under the account in addition to the service requests, because uh, there was a new identifier that was assigned to every service request um, 
type, even though those that came over from the legacy system. So the way to do that, again, is to create an account in the new system, contact 311, and then we would you know, honor your request because you're not going to be able to see only things that you'll be able to see right away are those service requests that you create. If you want to see the older service requests, you'll need to contact 311, unfortunately. But it's 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 a one-two step. Does that make sense? Yes. Now can folks do okay. con the second step of contacting either by calling or emailing 311 is either calling or emailing us, Great. yes. Okay. Calling or emailing us. Absolutely. And then a follow-up question, Carmen. Um, he is curious as to what percentage of accounts were uh, was three one one able to transfer? I don't know the percentage. It was a, an extremely low percentage. The contacts that were um, that we were able to transport over, I want to say, was less than three hundred. Um, out of all of the contacts that we have, it was right around a, a three hundred mark. It was very few. Um, and the reason for that is in the legacy system, there were places where um, we could put information, was this a resident or a citizen, we were using uh, different fields in the legacy system. So information was all over the place and it would have been a, a nightmare to try and migrate that information over and then sort it out in the new system. So the, the decision was made um, to bring over those contacts that met a certain criteria and it was only a, a very few and then um, work um, to you know encourage the public to register again. So if you call in once, then while you're, we're, we're, yeah, we have you on the phone, I can't talk this evening, it's been a long day, I'm so sorry people. But when you call, when you call in, we will um, you know, up, update the contact information in the system anyway, if individuals are used to calling in, but most if you um, have individuals that are used to using the um, website or the online platforms, then yeah, we're encouraging people to, to, to um, create a new account. But the answer to the question was, it was a very small, I don't know what the percentage, we, we had um, hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of contacts, but I think we were only able to migrate about 300. So whatever that percentage is. Any other, any other questions? There are a few, but I know time is limited, Carmen, so I'll let you go through and um, just show the tutorial and I'll answer the questions if you need to get off at 7.30. Okay. So I've already created accounts, so I don't believe that I will be able to walk through creating, creating um, an account here, but I, I'm going to show what a bounce over. This is the, the platform um, for entering a service request creating an account, it's, it's pretty intuitive. And we have instructions on the website that you can actually download and follow those. Um, if they're not intuitive, then you know, make sure and let us know so that we can revamp those. But in a service request, trying to create a service request, if I can get this thing to work, because again, this is stage. What we've tried to do is make it a little more simpler. It's also better for the servicing departments because up front, um, the servicing departments went through all of the service requests that we have for each servicing department. They were able to either add more um, questions up front um, because they know their business and they know the information that they would need that's valuable to them when they are sending out resources to you know resolve any issues um, or check on any complaints and do their investigations and so as you see this spinning this platform here is what you would see oh no you know what i am this is the mobile and this is a stage so i'm sorry my system is not cooperating so i am going to x out of this and transition to the website. The platform is similar. This is the website, this is live production. So the icons, we try to keep them the same as what you would see when you download the mobile app. Here is where you would submit um, a request. Here are the instructions that I just talked about um, for how to create an account. If you're on the website and also if you're here on um, the mobile app. So you these instructions, you'll be able to, can everybody see? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. My screen blinked. But these are the instructions, and this this is it'll walk you through how to create an account, um, and then how to submit a service request, whether you're on the mobile app or the website. A question that we've been getting a lot, and I'll just hit it here. So I'm, I'm jumping around. So again, if you have specific questions, feel free to ask me. Um, people were used to getting on the old legacy system. There was a link where you could pull up and print, download and print the um, trash collection calendars and recycling calendars. That information is still available. If you click here on Refuge, what we've done is instead of just taking you there, you have everything accessible from Refuge. So you've got the Waste Wizard, which if you type in any type of um, item, well, we'll just say carpet, it gives you instructions on how you can dispose of that. You can schedule it for bulk collection or you can drop it off and then it gives you instructions of how it needs to be arranged um, if you are scheduling it for, for bulk. Um, did I go back? But again, if you're looking for the calendars, so this will take you not only to the waste wizard, you have information about illegal dumping, ball collection, recycling, and the rotating calendars. You can click here and here they are. Uh, if you're looking for you know, the calendars and it'll, it'll upload and you can just you know, print, print off. This is the, the color calendar and then there's also just the collection calendar. So we, place the link purposefully because people wanted access to more information than just the calendars, but the calendars are accessible here as well. And then of course, the, the other links again will take you directly to information um, to the specific websites rather than just um, documents. If you're trying to submit a request, the look and feel was a little bit different, but it's it's actually the, the same. You would just click on create, service request type. What you're looking at here are the categories of all of the service requests. Anywhere there's an arrow, it's gonna give you um, additional options for the specific service request types. But at this level, these are the categories. If you're looking for something specific, you can type in a term. And that's, that is the, the service request type should populate or give you some options of what um, you need to, what you have to, um, to select from. Then you would just drop a pin on the location if you if you're familiar with your area and your gps is working it'll pick up or you can just type in an address it helps if you can spell <laughs> and, and the pin will drop generally in that location you can go ahead and and once the um, areas that you, you are typing in, it'll fill in blue so that you know that you're finished. If there's a red asterisk here, then you know that you need um, to provide more information. And then it just says, tell us more detail. You can type in the detail. I'm not going to click done, but once you click done, um, it will basically submit the service request. You have you can upload photos if you need to. 
this button here where it says keep this request private we try to get give a, a good explanation as to what that is all information that is reported into 311 is subject to Ohio's public records request law. And so this by no means um, means that um, if, we are, if we are asked that we don't have to release the record. What it means if you click this box is that it won't show on the public facing map. And some people, um, they select that because they don't want their request to show up on the public facing map. But again, all information that is reported to 311 is subject to Ohio's public records um, request laws. And then you hit submit. Um, what happens on the back end is a the service request is generated and automatically routed to the proper um, department. And you should receive an email um, that your service request was submitted and which department that it is routed to. Uh, on the back end, if for any reason the service request that um, a resident has selected is the wrong service request type, the departments um, are familiar with what their work is and how they how they do what they do. So they have the ability to reassign that service request to 311 and then we'll review the information if we need to. We will reach out to the resident for additional information and we will route that service request to the right department. All of that activity that I just described, the residents, you will receive notifications. And so some people like all of the notifications and some people don't like the notifications because uh, this system literally notifies you uh, anytime the record is touched. And so we are working on that. We have some feedback from um, residents. I'd love to hear your feedback if that is your experience as well. But we've, we have enough feedback that we believe we need to adjust the way the notices are going out because some people they just want to know um you know when it was created whether or not it's done and when it closed they don't want all of the back and forth um every time the record is touched any questions i see one question here in chat um someone would like to know whether or not anyone has ever hacked the 311 system and gotten personal information um from individuals I take who are probably registered? No, not to my knowledge. Uh, this And this platform is new, but uh, I've been here since 2018 and I am not um, aware of any hack of the city system at all. Okay. I actually have a question as well. I, um, I love the 311 system. I was excited to see the update. Um, but unfortunately, one of the things I have to report most often is that my recycling hasn't been picked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I tried to place that, the only item I could find in the system, I searched using the word recycle, and the only item I could find was titled recycling needs serviced. Is that what we should be using if our recycling is missed? That is. That okay. is the service request. Some of the service requests type the names, the departments they adjusted or changed or updated those, and that is one. But that is okay. the exact service request type that you would use for that particular okay. issue. So if we were used to using 311 a lot, we should just keep in mind that it's possible that some of those titles have changed and maybe look through and, and just see what those new titles might be. Yes, and we can do a better job. We can put some information out um, as well. Um, I've, I have gotten that before, Jess. So thanks for, for that feedback. We can also put um, something out on the website, actually on the main page, so that people will know which service request types have changed or the titles have been altered. I think that would be helpful. That is um, very helpful. Thank so we you. can do that sooner than later. Thank you. But Carmen only has about one minute left. I know Catherine <laughs> said she can help as well. Does anyone want to just jump in with a question? Um, feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask if you have anything quick. Okay. Seems like that might be it, Carmen. So if anything comes up, um, should if we do have questions about, you know, we need tech support for 311, should we use the 311 email address to get that tech support or is there a better place we should go? So on the uh, on the mobile app, yes, you can use the email address. You can shoot us an email if you're having uh, having issues. Emails, we are within our two day window for working um, emails. You can always call, of course. I know when call volume is high, we encourage people to use a callback feature. Um, if for whatever reason, all of our call paths, and that has happened, are full and call, that means that nothing can get through and nothing is going out from the IVR. Please be patient. Um, we are aware that that is, that is uh, maybe an issue 
Um, but you, all of the other platforms are available. You can send us an email, you can use the you know, web, you can use the online. If it's after hours, you can also leave a voicemail. Those are work first thing um, in the morning. But yes, there are multiple ways that you can get us information that you are having technical issues and we will get back to you definitely. On the mobile app, you can actually send any technical issues that you're having with the mobile app. Th those go directly to um, the vendor and it's called Report Above. Let me see if I can. Uh, I don't know if I can move this out the way. Yeah. Let's see if I can get to it. I think it's here on the more. There should be a button that says report a bug. And I'm not seeing it. But I will make sure to do a screenshot. I can get that out to everyone. Reporter, if you if you're on here and you see it says report a bug, that goes directly to the vendor and you can report it that way as well. Wonderful. Even though I'm not seeing it here. Apologize. Carmen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. This has been so helpful. We really appreciate this. I know that a lot of folks um, who attend our meetings do use 311 frequently, and um, it was great of you to share this with us. We'll actually um, publish this meeting on our uh, YouTube channel, so folks who weren't able to come tonight will still be able to benefit from it as well. So we really appreciate you. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate you so very gracious. Give us a thank call you, uh, and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> thank you. Have a wonderful evening. You too. All right, well, we are going to move right over uh, to Catherine Cole, who is our new Southside Neighborhood Liaison. So Catherine is going to introduce herself, tell you a bit about what she does, and uh, the floor is yours, Catherine. Thank you, Jess. Good evening, everyone. My name is Catherine Cole. I am your new Southside Neighborhood Liaison. Um, you guys are probably all aware of my predecessor, Beth Fairman Kinney. Um, we just did a swap -roo. I was the North Side Neighborhood Liaison for four years, and she was the South Side Neighborhood Liaison for over five years. Um, and she wanted to be closer to her kids and family in Clintonville, and I wanted to come down to the South Side, so it was just a perfect um, opportunity to do so. Um, my background is social work, which also makes it a great fit for me to be in the Reap Avenue Center. Previously, I worked at COAAA with older adults, and prior to that, I worked at um, Franklin County Courts on death penalty cases and felony level cases. And then prior to that, I did a lot of community-based mental health, um, working with homeless youth, both in Columbus and in Chicago, along with HIV-positive women in Chicago. So I have kind of a broad a spectrum of previous work and excited to bring that to the South Side and to the Reeve Avenue Center. Um, for those not aware of the Department of Neighborhoods and Neighborhood Liaisons, our department was formed under Mayor Ginther um, six years ago now. Um, he merged a lot of different departments that were housed in um, development and um, CRC and brought us all together to best meet um, the needs of the community. Thank you, Steve. Um, and so with, within Department of Neighborhoods, we of course have 311 House, we have the Neighborhood Liaisons, we have My Brother's Keeper, which was an initiative started by President Barack Obama. We have um, CRC, which is, um, they deal with discrimination uh, within the city of Columbus. Um, we have New American, um, with um, Abdi Sofe, um, and we have Neighborhood Pride, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, which has been rebranded into Rise Up CBUS. I'm sure you've seen my emails about that. So that is Department of Neighborhoods in a nutshell. Um, and the neighborhood liaisons, there are eight of us housed throughout the city of Columbus, um, and we are all assigned different areas of the city. And I say that we are the front door to the city. So Anyone can call us and it's, you know, hard to navigate the city. Sometimes I even have a challenge figuring out who to contact or where to go, but we are the front door. So any neighborhood or city related question or concern, whether that be a zoning question, whether that be a crime and safety concern, whether that be a high grass complaint for your neighbor, a business is not, um, uh, you know, up to code. 
we we help you resolve that community question or concern. I of course do a lot of community engagement in the evenings and weekends, going out to area commissions, civic associations to share about what's going on in the city, but also to receive feedback so I can take that to the department. Hey, you know, I'm getting a lot of complaints about speeding along Parsons Avenue. So I may take that not only to the police, but to traffic management to look at what we can do to resolve speeding along Parsons Avenue. So that is my role. Uh, my um, office is unique, whereas all the other neighborhood liaisons are housed within city um, buildings. I'm housed within the Reeve Avenue Center, so I get a lot of um, foot traffic in from our neighbors surrounding the Reeve Avenue Center um, and get an opportunity to work with all the other tenants, which are nonprofits. So I get a lot of social work related questions or concerns. Um, Reeve Avenue just hired a so their own social worker, so that will hopefully relieve um, some of my kind of day to day crises that I may encounter. Um, so I'm just really excited to be within the Reeve Avenue Center as they rebrand and reopen up to the community. Fantastic, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Catherine? No. Quiet group tonight. Sorry, I do. Oh, go for it, Allison. I, uh, what, what do the social workers at, at Reeve Avenue do? Like I, I have two elderly um, tenants who are having some issues with a family member and I'm, I've been having a really hard time um, finding anybody who can help uh, or who has some advice or services they can help me with. Sure, um, you can contact me. Um, the social worker just started today. Um, so I met him kind of in passing. So I don't know what all he will be doing. He was at Godman Guild for, I think, 20 years. So he has a pretty um, grassroots social work background. I don't know, um, but we're hoping to meet the needs or support people, whoever walk in the Reeve Avenue Center. But I'm also happy to, um, I'm gonna leave my contact information in the chat. We can follow up tomorrow to talk more about um, you said it was your tenants or your neighbors, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll shoot, I'll shoot you an email. I think yeah. I have your email. I appreciate it and welcome. Thank you. Um, and one, and um, on that note, I've started um, what I'm calling community conversations. So it's a deep dive into topics that I may receive a lot of questions or comments on. So for June, it is 311 training, which um, a lot of people seem to have questions about. It is the, I don't want to misspeak, but I think it's the fourth Thursday of every month from 10 a.m. to 1130 at the Reeve Avenue Center. In July, we are hosting a community conversation around older adult services. Um, so we're going to have a speaker from Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging talk about all the services they provide. We're having someone from Legal Aid talk about living wills. We are having someone from Columbus Rec and Parks talk about older adult activities um, to keep people busy and satisfied. And someone from Age Friendly, um, which is I think through Franklin County. So that is our July topic. Um, I've yet to figure out our August topic, but certainly open to things that you guys would like to see and hear, please let me know. Fantastic, thank you. Steve, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, Catherine, um, just want to welcome you to the South Side. Um, you know, my wife and I are both social workers, so we love like the background. She actually works at CEOAA right now, so I love the connection with older adults as well. This is 100% like a softball question. Um, just want to like welcome you to the neighborhood. What was it that, you know, you said you wanted to come down to the South Side from the North End. What is it uh, that drew you to, uh, to this neighborhood, this part of town? Um, well, I've lived uh, on the South Side in several locations. I lived on Lathrop, which is Schumacher Place. I lived on Whittier, which um, is at Marion Village. I always identified it as German Village. The South uh, Side of Whittier, part of it is Marion Village. Yes. The North Side, part of it's Schumacher. And then there's a portion that's German Village as well. So it's all yes, mixed so up. The South Side of Whittier, that was my first apartment right next to the Hey Hey Bar. That was a lot of fun. That's us. Um, and then most recently before by my grandparents' house on the east side, I lived on uh, Wager Street, 
Um, I will say it was like before it was cool. It was kind of a, you know, pretty rough. That was like 10 years ago. It was pretty rough um, neighborhood at the time. Um, and so why did I, why did I want to come to the South side? So I have a lot of friends and connections prior to just like living there from Southern orchards. And I just loved um, the idea of the Reeve Avenue center and being able to collaborate with a lot of different partners to resolve a community concern. I think that the short North university Clintonville area, everyone kind of worked in silos. That was my experience. Um, and I think that the vibe I get from the South side is, people willing to um, both community members and community partners able to pitch in wanting to resolve a community issue. Well, we are thrilled to have you. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Andrew, I see you have your hand. Hi, Catherine. Can you hear me? I can. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Um, yeah, this is Andrew and this is Nicole. I've uh, been Nicole. on here in the South Side since uh, November of uh, 20. So couple years and and so just a couple concerns I wanted to raise is that uh, we live on Welch Avenue it's a great community block area of neighbors watch out for each other and so forth but a couple things that have come up recently is uh, just a, a number of thefts uh, and crime um, through the uh, through the neighborhood you know everything from lawnmowers being stolen out of garages to the plants being stolen off porches and a lot of it's been caught on camera including a flower box that was stolen right in front of our home at 1.30 in the morning. But anyway, we've got another one and we've got that one screwed now. So there is that issue. And then I think um, for us is kind of um, dumping uh, in the alleys and, and, and trash, uh, open open backyards with, with trash and that sort of stuff. So I did use 311. I think you guys do a great job. I was very helpful, but just, uh, just kind of wanted to get your reaction on, on those issues. Sure. Um, I know crime throughout the entire city is um, skyrocketing. Theft is huge right now. You know, I watch a lot of the ring cameras on various Facebook pages um, and working really closely with uh, the Columbus Police Liaison, Officer Medley. We just, um, the other CLO that I worked with, Officer Peck, he just went to a new assignment. Um, so I'm working to, um, get that position, I'm not working to get that position, but hoping that Columbus Police fills that position soon um, so we can get more police in the area. Um, one great thing that I've been able to do recently, I did a police ride along of your area. I did it on a Friday night, second shift. That was really great and eye-opening to kind of see the trends of the neighborhood going from run to run. And unfortunately due to the high crime, and a lot of retirements um, and, and they're talking about, uh, I know that mayor has talked about the, the buyout is a reduce in police force. They are just going from run to run and particularly on the south side, they are tremendously busy. Um, but I was able to meet some new officers that are new to the area and they really wanna be um, building community with the neighborhood. So they are, I have two officers that are volunteering every week at the Reeve Avenue Center with the youth in uh, the Boys and Girls Club. They're gonna be doing art projects. Um, the police officer used to be a former art teacher, which I think is a great background and I'm really thrilled about that. And just trying to get more police presence riding around and being eyes and ears on the ground. So I know that's not a great answer. Um, I know it's very frustrating. The main thing I tell people to do is if you can just leave nothing in your car and I just leave my car unlocked, so I'm like rifle through my car, go through it, just don't break any windows. And I keep nothing valuable in my car. I think that car break-ins are, I'm seeing that as a huge trend right now. Okay, thanks for the input, great advice. Thank you. Excited to hear about the two officers who are um, interested in engaging in the community. That's very exciting. Yeah, we're having, um, uh, for Reeb Avenue um, reopening, and I know you've probably seen my emails, Jess, um, Monday, June 13th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, you know, of course, all the tenants from the Reeb Avenue Center, a bunch of um, city departments, but the police officers are going to be painting bases. So we will really test their art abilities then. And That's good to know. We might have to hook them up for our down. festival. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Anyone else have any questions or anything they'd like to share with Catherine while she's joining us? 
Okay, I think that's it. Catherine, you said you were going to um, drop your contact information in chat, correct? Yes. Okay, um, awesome. Anyone, um, I send out a weekly email blast of all of my city and um, south side updates. If you are not on that email blast and you want to be, please just send me an email saying sign me up. I'm also going to leave my um, desk phone number and my cell phone number that you can um, call me or text me at. Fantastic. And we will actually, we have a resource page um, on our website that kind of guides folks to different okay. city resources. I will go ahead and add a section um, specific for your role and make sure your contact info is there as well. Great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We really appreciate your time. No I know you're trying to, to connect with all of the different neighborhoods in this area, and we really appreciate you being here. So thank you again. Thank you for having me, Jess. Absolutely. All right. Well, everyone say goodbye to Catherine, and we will move on to the rest of our agenda. Okay. So reminder for folks, we are into our spring and summer fitness in the park series um, that started a couple of weeks ago. So that's going to be every morning, I'm sorry, <laughs> every Saturday morning in Muller Park through September. Um, that starts at 9am in the morning. And typically these are yoga classes. Um, little you know, some yoga classes with a different spin, but we do have a full page that, that breaks down all of the different um, volunteer uh, instructors that are teaching those classes, what type of yoga, um, so that you can kind of see what you'd like to attend. And then because it's volunteer based, we do recommend a, do a donation directly to the instructor at the class if you decide to join them. So um, you're really excited to see those getting, getting off the ground. The instructors are excited. Uh, everybody was really pumped about being involved in it again this year. So we hope everyone enjoys those classes and uh, hope to see you out there on Saturday mornings. All right, Allison, step up to the mic. We are going to talk about this year's garden tour. All right. I was just gonna text you and ask you to do it, um, but I will. I have to do so, all the other talking. So this is I know, all I know, I'll give you a break. So we are working on getting business members. If you have a place that you frequent and you may or may not know the owner um, or, or a manager or something, if you don't mind um, just popping in their ear, maybe passing um, the website along or one of those um, business cards that Eric was talking about in the beginning, that would be helpful. Um, we have, I, I Jess, I don't know the total as of today, but I think the last that we, we talked, we had seven or eight gardens uh, that have already applied. We have at um, least eight applications, possibly nine. Okay, cool. A couple more people we've been uh, talking to. So if you, if you see a garden in the neighborhood that you like or just something about it that catches your eye, um, you know, pass along the information to them. The garden tour is July 10th from 10 to 3. Um, we're making some progress with our... Um, you know, just all the planning. So, and if you're interested in, in jumping in and planning, we'd, we'd love to have you. Um, we're hoping to put together a scavenger hunt with some of our business members. So that'll be fun. Um, so we're kind of brainstorming some of that stuff. Um, so if you've ever been a part of something like that, or you have ideas, um, you know, we're open to uh, anybody who has ideas or would like to chip in. So just let us know. And, you, and if you uh, can't reach us, you can always, of course, reach out to Jess or any of the board members and they'll pass you along. So did I get it all, Jess? I think so. And then we'll keep a couple cool. little juicy details, of course, until we get closer to the event and, you know, want to sure. get everybody really excited. Yeah. Juicy details. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you, Allison. Allison has been chairing this event now for several years, and we very much appreciate it because this is one of our favorite events, 23rd annual. So pretty exciting to see that continuing and uh, very, very excited for hopefully a beautiful day that is not too hot and is great for touring the gardens. So looking forward to that. Uh, all right, 2022 Marion Village Festival. Um, looking around, Allison and Tate are also involved with that committee, so I'm going to give an update and then ask them to jump in if I miss anything. Um, we are meeting every couple of weeks to plan the event. It will be returning in person on Sunday, September 11th. That's held in Moeller Park from noon to 6. Um, if you are not familiar with the festival, it is our biggest event of the year. So we are hoping um, that this year will be no exception. Again, beautiful weather since it is all outdoor. 
Uh, we're planning for a total of four food trucks, which is four hot food trucks, and then a dessert truck, which will be Chilljoy this year. Very excited about that. Um, we typically look for around 80 vendors, which is people who hand make items, local businesses, nonprofits, so a great mix of folks with information and items uh, to share. We are working on a, uh, an, a, how do I, it's a community art project that will happen during the event that will probably involve photography and videography. So excited about this, that this year. We're going to want everybody to be involved in that um, to commemorate the festival and, and you know, our neighborhood. Um, and then we are hopefully going to have a bike corral. We're still working on that. Um, if you've attended past festivals, you might know that we had previously used the lot that Kroger owned between Freitas and uh, Moeller as kind of parking for a lot of vendors. That is being developed, so it will no longer be available, and parking will certainly be tight that day. So we're working hard to make sure that everyone who is local to the area and can bike, walk or bike will be able to do that um, and hopefully keep the, the traffic congestion to a minimum if possible. Uh, let's see, what am I forgetting about festival, guys? Anything I missed? No? Okay. There'll be more, obviously, as that event, you know, progresses. We're still in June now, so uh, we will have a silent auction. Um, we've already got folks working on the process of getting donations from, from local businesses. So if you know someone who you think might like to make a donation to that silent auction, which really helps us to raise funds, um, send them our way. We'd love to hear from them and see if we can get them involved in that process. And also, there will be plenty of volunteer opportunities on the day of the festival, so keep your eyes peeled for that in a couple of months, uh, as it takes a lot of people to make this event a great one. So we appreciate all of you in advance. Okay, uh, moving on, we'll do committee updates. We don't have anything to share with you for beautification today. That committee is still looking for a new chair um, and committee member, so if you're very passionate about beautification and whatever that means to you, uh, let us know. You can help revitalize that committee. Same with membership, the board is pretty much focusing on that right now, but there's also some focus from the garden tour committee who's helping to try to engage businesses or um, business membership. So if you're interested in helping us contact businesses or you know spreading the word to residents, maybe you wanna give away some of these cards to folks while you're out walking your dog or hanging out at the park, that would be fantastic. We have a thousand cards to go around, so if you'd like to pick some up, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at president at marionvillage.org. You can swing by and grab some cards for yourself and become an official MVA ambassador to help us spread the word and, and grow our membership. Uh, social, I don't, Lauren is not with us tonight. Um, Mike. I've got, I've got the update for Mike. Yes, please go. Uh, it is going to be Thursday, June 16th at Club Diversity. So the um, summer social will be on Thursday, June 16th at Club D, um, which is really fitting because it's Pride Weekend that weekend. So we'll get it off to a great start. They have an amazing patio. We're going to try to get there early, get a um, one of the gazebos in the back. Um, it's dog friendly in the back. Um, so definitely please, please join. Start time on that, Eric. Uh, he did not say, I think we've been doing six lately. I'll, um, I'll text him right now and then maybe he'll reply before we end the meeting. And we'll definitely get an event up on Facebook if you want to snag that as well so you can get a reminder. But um, we've been trying to do those each month. So hopefully folks will show up for that as well. Zoning. Tate, anything to share with us for zoning this evening? Yes, but not much. Um, so obviously no... Um, new variance requests uh, for, for, for this month. And uh, there's not anything currently, uh, but we might have, we'll see, we might have some for next meeting. Uh, we do have a demolition um, application to talk about just real quick. Uh, it's 1250 uh, Front Street, uh, South Front Street. Looks like it's a two story building and uh, what, what they're going, it's not historic or anything like that. And what they're going to do is use it for uh, parking. So there won't be a new building to replace it. Um, if you have any questions, I can try to answer those now. Uh, if not, I think that's really all I got, Jess. Anyone have questions for Tate on that demolition? Tate, who's parking for where? That's like next to Caskey's, right? Yeah, I, uh, the owner is Colvin Gravel. Um, so I'm not sure if they're... Well, I didn't see that on the application of uh, 
like if it's for business parking i did do the street view so it's that white and green building then yeah hmm i mean it seems perfectly fine building like it's not like they need to tear down because it's like unsafe or not that it's that um i don't believe it was for let's see. Is it 1250 or 1251? 1250. Oh, okay. Hmm. Sounds fine. Yeah, you've got it. It's that white and green building. Um, That's very interesting. Yeah, I believe they, I shared all the information that they put on the application. As it is right now, there's nothing that they're planning to do with the lot that requires um, like rezoning or variance from the city, which is why we're not seeing it as a formal application. So um, sounds like they're just looking for a parking lot sorry what was the address on that i had a step away no no problem uh 1250 south front and if you want me to share my screen Thank of you. the street view i can of the the beautiful white and white and green building yeah I can. go for it Tate. you may as well all righty no you've already got it up everybody see that okay it's uh, yes. it just now came through And looks then, like a just, decent just, building. That's what I, that's what I was saying. Like, doesn't thing seem to be anything wrong with it? I yeah, wonder if they're going to basically rent out parking to maybe other entities nearby or something like that. Who, who is the who who owns it or who's the applicant? It, it is. I'm sorry. You see all my tabs open. Hold on. <laughs> that's enough. Uh, at Colvin, where where did I put it? Hold on. Sorry, guys. Did I get out of it? You said it was a gravel company. Yeah. One second. I'm getting this stupid. Uh... They may be using it, honestly, for their um, transport trucks or something then. I mean, if they I want to tear down so. a building, I can give them a couple other better suggestions. <laughs> right. There it is. Hold on. Uh, Colvin Gravel Company. Daniel Colvin. Everybody see that okay? Mm -hmm. It says it's a two-story structure. It didn't look two-story on the... Yeah, that's, what, that's what's on the application. I thought the same thing, but that's what it says. Demolition of a two-story structure. I wonder if it's that little house part that's next to it, maybe. If it has the loading the bay. Hmm. Yeah, here. But yep, that's, that's all I have from zoning. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay, doesn't look like it. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Thank you very much for that update. Okay, uh, it does not look like we have any area commissioners with us this evening, so we will jump over area commission updates. Uh, just a reminder of some of the upcoming events. We obviously have our next monthly meeting, which will be on Wednesday, July 6th. The Southside Area Commission's next meeting is Tuesday, June 28th at 6.30, and that's over at Barrick Recreation Center. Those have returned to in-person. Um, and then if you are interested, our neighbors in Schumacher Place are having a block party with live music, kids' activities. Uh, I think they're doing a raffle. Um, and that's going to be this Saturday, June 4th, from 4 to 6 at Columbus Preparatory Academy. So I believe that's at the corner of, like, Beck and... Lathrop maybe, um, but certainly all are welcome to that, and they've, they've definitely invited uh, folks from Marion Village who'd like to check that out. So if you're interested, stop by and tell our neighbors hello. All right, we are going to open the floor for community interests, questions, concerns. I believe we have at least one neighbor here tonight that um, wanted to chat with folks about a potential concern. So anyone looking around? Jonathan, yes. Sorry, Jonathan, I was looking around and couldn't see your name. Hi everyone, I hope I'm coming through. Yes. Um, I'll try to make this concise. Um, my name is Jonathan Wally. I live on Mithoff Street near the corner of Jaeger. Um, and I just wanted to bring um, to the attention of the association problems that several of my neighbors uh, are have been having in the last um, year and a half to two years, but especially um, in the last year with the business mid city garage, which is the bar and restaurant at the intersection of um, Jaeger and Midhoff. It's 1179 Jaeger street. Um, the main problems um, have been 
uh, noise from the outdoor speakers, which are often playing very loudly um, as late as one or one thirty in the morning, which is an hour to an hour and a half past the closing time um, of the restaurant. Um, and um, noise and other activities by both patrons and employees of the restaurant um, that have included, uh, I live two doors down from the property, my neighbor who could not be here tonight um, because he's on a business trip, uh, lives immediately adjacent to uh, the property and, and, and to the restaurant, um, has had trespasses on his property, patrons urinating in his yard, uh, vomiting on his landscaping in the front yard um, and patrons and I believe in some cases employees gathering in the street very loudly again as late as midnight or later um, in some cases as late as one or 1 30 in the morning um, those are really the main issues so I would say it's noise from the outdoor speakers um, and I guess what I would call just sort of raucous um, and unmonitored activity by both patrons and um, um, and employees. Um, we've made contact with the owner of the property, not the owner of the restaurant, but the owner of the property who lives on Midhoff Street, and with management of the restaurant where there seems to have been a fair amount of turnover. Um, and so there's been an inconsistent uh, response to concerns um, issued to the restaurant by neighbors, but by and large, there's been no change in any of these problems, um, which go back to 2020. Um, and so I just, I, I really just wanted to bring that to the attention. I actually spoke earlier today with Catherine, uh, who I'd reached out to um, about this um, and so that's, that's really it was just bringing attention to this. And, um, I've been back and forth on email with Jess and with Catherine and, um, but any, anything like advice, suggestions, ideas that people want to share with me, um, or, or that, that I can pass along to, to, uh, my neighbors, uh, would be most appreciated. Has anyone reached out to the, uh, owner george that to to my knowledge no and i actually started in the last week or so trying to find his contact information um to no avail but i i would like to reach out to him let me see now. if i can find it and then i see david has his hand raised i have a quick question before i turn over to him um you mentioned obviously that you have spoken to Catherine. So do you have, you or neighbors already have um, any kind of maybe history of having to report noise complaints either to the police or anything that you may have had to report to 311? Do you have any kind of history? Of right. Those so um, we, we haven't, so we haven't done that yet. Okay. Uh, really what's happened is I think that a number of individual people living in that area of the intersection of Jaeger and Midoff have kind of been suffering in silence and Recently, and especially as people are getting together more after COVID, there's been just more back and forth and discussion about it uh, among several of the, the residents of that area. And so I think what's starting now is trying to do something that's, that's um, you know, that's group oriented, but no. And, and so at this point, I know that a number of the neighbors who live in that immediate vicinity will, you know, call the police. Our hope, our, our hope is you know, we certainly don't want to be like in a fight with the business. You know, we're happy for the business to be there. Obviously, the fact that it's a bar and restaurant is not in and of itself a problem. It's just, you know, what's going on there, um, which I think falls to management and ownership. Um, and so we'd like to try to resolve these problems in a way that, you know, makes sense for the neighborhood. Um, and, you know, especially, I think there's also been you know, we're, we're all well aware of the challenges that the neighborhood is facing and that the police are facing here and that there's crime and there's 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 things that are higher on the list. Um, and so we, we'd really like to be able to resolve the situation without some kind of legal intervention. But I think it, it may be a matter of I, I'm, I'm certain that they're in violation of the noise ordinances. And so I think we may need to do that. But again, it would be it would be wonderful if we could work with the restaurant, with the property owner, with the business owner and with with management um, to resolve this. 
and you know, of course, our our, our hope would be that um, we could come to a good neighbor agreement between the owner um, of of the restaurant and neighbors. Of course, that isn't legally enforceable, but it's certainly a show of good faith that everyone involved is coming to the table and discussing those those concerns, getting them out there, and then you know, committing at least to make some effort to resolve them. Um, David, you had your hand up. Did you still have something? That was actually going to be my precise question. Was I'm guessing we don't have an agreement on file with them and, and we do not. that would be a good thing to do, yeah. If I recall correctly, when, when Mid-City Grill came to the association several years ago when they were um, converting that space from an actual automobile garage to this, I believe that a good neighbor agreement was mentioned and that the owner did state that they would certainly be interested in pursuing that, but at this time, no, we do not have one on the file. So um, normally that's kind of the path that the MBA likes to take because we can create a solution that works for both, you know, the neighbors and for the business. So that would be the path we'd like to pursue if we can um, make that connection with obviously the owner first and foremost, but then of course, some level of connection with management as well. Yeah, just if I may, I was at that meeting um, when the the main discussion I think was parking variances and other things that were going on. And um, the individual who was, and this was before the uh, property was purchased um, uh, by George Tanchevsky. So it was being um, renovated to be leased as a some kind of business space. Um, the owner of the property was not, as far as I remember, at the meeting, he was represented by the architect. Um, but the architect was asked, because a number of concerns were raised at that meeting about things like noise and parking mm-hmm. and other issues, and, and um, the good neighbor agreement was that that was raised and and the architect who again I understood was speaking as the representative of, of the property owner um, you know said he was certainly amenable to that okay okay well that's very helpful um all right so I think our next steps will be um, Allison that you you might have the number that we can try to get in contact with George um, so we'll take that first step to see if we can get contact with George bring these problems to his attention and then see if we could go about um, possibly scheduling like a meeting with with the neighbors who are nearby um, so that this issue can be discussed. And then, of course, as that progresses, we'll just bring updates back um, to folks at monthly meetings. But we will focus the efforts outside of the monthly meeting as not to obviously take too much time, but also make sure we are committing enough time um, to hopefully addressing this. So anyone else have anything they want to add or or thoughts on this before um, before we get started trying to get contact with George? Yeah, um, it's Vicki. Um, the, the owner is still the original owner who lives on Midoff Street uh, of the of the property. Um, the restaurant just leases the property from the owner. He still owns it. He put it in an LLC, but the billing is still going to his home address, his tax bill, and everything. So, okay. He, uh, um, Dave Katik is still the owner, and. Well- that's a good point because he could be getting these code violations then on him. So he may be the first route we should take. Yeah, I believe we should uh, at least talk to him because he's in the next, he's one block over, but he probably wouldn't be impacted by the noise from it. But um, I remember he didn't come to the meetings before when he was trying to get the variance, he had an architect come and do that. And also the renderings that were provided at that time look very different. There was a lot more green space than is there now. Um, if you go back and look at the renderings that were provided back when they originally, you know, went into the neighborhood. I normally uh, admittedly rely a lot on, on Tom Lust to help because he knows all of the, the code requirements. I don't believe um, that they are required to meet the rendering specifically. Those are typically just, a, that's not an item that normally um, is a requirement to stick. Um, they may have had to provide a certain number of green space for the city as far as a percentage, but that's typically not an item um, that we get to, to, to vote on and, and hold a business sure. to, um, is my recollection of that anyway from the conversations we've had with Tom on that before. So it's always unfortunate sometimes although sometimes it's the other way around and it's fortunate if they do make changes, but um, renderings unfortunately don't have a lot of bearing just because that's not something we're typically able to hold someone to. But the other issues are certainly problems. I think the focus was, is it was going to be a restaurant, not a bar. 
um, at, at those meetings. That mm -hmm. is how it was presented. And um, for a while, they had stopped serving food, and they had a food truck come to serve the food there. Now they have leased the food out to somebody else, but the person, George, is not doing the food in there now. He's leased it to someone else. Okay. So it, it, there's some changes to it. So. It sounds like there are a lot of uh, a lot of moving pieces in this place. So yeah. there are a lot of folks that maybe need to come to the table on this one. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, this is all very helpful. Obviously, Jonathan, you and I have already been in contact, so we will keep that up. Um, and certainly feel free to loop in any of the other neighbors who would like to be involved in these conversations. Um, but we will work on contact with both Dave and George um, since this is kind of an issue with, you know, the, the building itself, uh, like you mentioned, Allison, with potential code violations. Um, but then, of course, with the actual owner of the operating business. So we will work on that and report back when we have more information. Thank, thank you for you, sharing everyone. this with us, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you. All right, so floor is open. Is there anyone else with anything they'd like to share? Any questions? Any upcoming events you want to make folks aware of? Any concerns? Not hearing anything. I'll let everyone know that um, I am discussing with a few other members, one who's here, Steve. Um, we're looking for some ways to make sure that now that our meetings are um, permanently virtual, that we are still making them very engaging for folks and um, finding ways to, to keep everyone involved and informed and engaged. So we'll have some updates for you on that soon. We're going to be meeting here in the coming week, I believe, um, and hopefully we'll have some news soon. Okay, uh, Vicki, I'm going to just ask you really quickly, if, if no, no problem. I believe Block Watch meetings have resumed. Do you have any updates that you want to share for Block Watch if you've been attending those? I was not at the last meeting, okay. so yeah, and I'm uh, pro I'm probably not going to be the liaison any longer. I've got okay. a lot of stuff going. On. I'm not. I I go when I can, but I'm not always attending. So we completely understand that. We appreciate um, the updates you did give us in the past. So thank you for that. Sure. Okay, well, I will go ahead and close this up here in just a few minutes. If there's no one else that has to has anything to jump in with. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here this evening. Oh, no, you weren't raising your hand. You were waiting. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, that's Zach. Zach, would you like to introduce yourself and say hello? Zach is new uh, to the area. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Zach Rabarczyk. I just uh, I had a great conversation with Jess this morning. Um, like she said, uh, my wife and I are new to the neighborhood. Um, really looking forward to getting involved um, with some of the committees and activities that are going on. Um, so I'll be in touch. Um, I have background in neighborhood events and committees and uh, community building. So I'm just really looking forward to, to making our new roots here. That's what we like so. to hear, Zach. Eric is very excited right now. Eric is our- uh... I think you just signed yourself up on yeah, social media. Yeah, I was just about to how passionate are you about beautification, Zach? <laughs> Told you. I can, I, it sounds like it could be very wide ranging. So it could be whatever you want to make it. Like you would be a committee of one. <laughs> we'll 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 talk. I'm I'm interested. Excellent, excellent. If not, we got plenty of other things to do too. So don't worry about that. We'll we'll put you to use. Thank you. Yes, there is no shortage of things to do. So. Awesome. Well, thank I you for saying hello. Thank Sorry, you. I almost missed you, Zach. Um, oh, it is, you'll have to forgive me, everyone. It is currently 87 degrees inside of my home because our AC is broken. So I'm, you know, trying to get through. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again, everybody, for being here. Can't wait to see you next month. And uh, next month, actually, we will be meeting just a few days before the garden tour. So make sure you're following us on social media to get those updates about the tour. Um, we're really looking forward to this year and cannot wait to bring this back in person for the first time fully in two years. So thanks again, everyone. We'll see you all soon. Have a great evening. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.